That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. All right, guys, some pretty exciting announcements here. We do have updated rookie ADP available over there on Patreon. Now, y'all know a lot of things on Patreon are behind a paywall, like our rookie draft guide that's going to be out at the end of the month, as well as our official rookie rankings, which were just posted. I understand we posted our rookie rankings after the NFL draft with our initial reactions. But now that we've had about a month to go through and really dive into those situations, really look at the profiles from that rookie draft guide, I think that list that we just posted for both one quarterback leagues as well as super flex leagues, that should be pretty damn close to the final list if it's not already. So please go over there. Feel free to check out that completely free average draft position data. And also another very exciting announcement, and that's for whatever reason, Sideline Sprint has decided to sponsor this video. Thank you so much for everybody over there at Sideline Sprint. So if y'all are wondering what Sideline Sprint is, essentially, I mean, you know, ESPN has kind of turned into garbage. I mean, I've been sending out tweets and stuff about it where they don't even talk about sports news. Well, Sideline Sprint, that's all they talk about. They literally just hit the highlights on every main sport, anything from just say European soccer all the way to the NFL. They're giving you the highlights. They're giving you the games that matter. I will put it up on the screen. That way you get a feel for what it is. But please, guys, go to the description of the video. Click that link. Also, I'll drop it in the comment section below for you all to check out Sideline Sprint. It's completely completely free and of course when you do that it definitely helps the channel but that's it let's get into this video let's talk about some of these rookies that are rising in our ADP now I think that some of this is just going to be due to small samples and some of this is just going to be due to some random variants but with a few of these rookies maybe we can try to hypothesize what the reason is that they have risen in our ADP consistently since the NFL draft but regardless let's dive into it and our first player is going to be Trey Sermon. And now with Trey Sermon, I mean, I actually thought that he would rise more. Now, y'all know I kind of came out and predicted that he was going to be a riser from that initial set of ADP because we were looking at it going, you know what? He is in a giant tier of wide receivers. And of course, I am on record saying, depending on your league format, I think the majority of the time, the wide receivers are the correct decision over a Trey Sermon. Someone like Elijah Moore, Terrace Marshall, Rashad Bateman, you know the list in that tier too. But I mean, Trey Sermon, you have to understand that if you're a running back needy team and you are drafting at the beginning of the second round in a super flex league or at the end of the first round in a one quarterback format, I mean, you really have no options. I mean, at that point you're going, okay, if we desperately need a running back, I mean, are we really going to be wanting to choose between a Rashad Bateman and Elijah Moore, a Rondell Moore, a Terrace Marshall? Are we going to be looking at that giant tier of wide receivers? Or are we going to be going with the best running back available on the board in Trey Sermon after you get past Javante Williams is clearly that player? So this is why I was kind of saying to go and make the initial risk investment into Trey Sermon directly after the NFL draft, given the fact that when you're in a draft class that is weak at a particular position past a certain point, you are just naturally going to be getting pushed up the board. I mean, go back to a historically great wide receiver class with literally no running backs and look at a guy like Bishop Sankey, who was drafted to the Tennessee Titans, someone that had a very bad draft profile, yet his ADP continued to rise throughout the course of the offseason, given the fact that there were really no other running backs that you were looking for. So even with the wide receivers being better prospects, I mean, sometimes just a lack of supply is going to rise a player if that demand remains constant. And I think that's what you're seeing right now with Trey Sermon rise up that ADP board, given the fact that you're kind of looking at him as a player that just stands out from the rest in that one tier. I don't think it's warranted, but I think it was to be expected. And maybe if this continues to happen and you can just try to use that to your advantage, you can go shoot your league mates, say, hey, man, in the majority of rookie drafts, you have Trey Sermon getting drafted over Rashad Bateman. Can we make this switch? Can, can we do that? And hopefully that works out given the team need. Now, our next player is someone that I don't understand the rise, to be honest, but this is Kyle Trask. And here with Kyle Trask, we recently actually got done writing him up in the Rookie Draft Guide a few weeks ago. And with Trask, I mean, it's interesting because obviously he's a player that you're not going to project to be the starter anytime soon in Tampa. But to be honest, you're never projecting those players that were drafted at the end of the second round, beginning of the third round at the quarterback position to come in and start right away. The majority of the times, they're never even going to get a shot to start at the NFL level. 
But what we are looking for with those players and why we are drafting Jalen Hurts everywhere last offseason is you go, okay, just say that this player who gets drafted in a range where most of the time he's not going to get a chance to start, what happens if he does? What happens if he does? Will we actually be able to start him in fantasy if he gets a two-month stretch where he is the starting quarterback for his NFL team? And usually when you're looking for those players, you're wanting guys with rushing production like a Jalen Hurts because we go, hey, Jalen Hurts has so much rushing upside that we know if he does get the start for the Philadelphia Eagles, he's for sure in our starting lineup where Kyle Trask literally has none of that rushing upside. And I repeat, he has none of it. But on the other hand, you're looking at him as a quarterback that if he did manage to get into the game, say you see a Tom Brady injury, which I know pretty much never happens, or maybe you see just Tom Brady play one more season. And he's like, you know what? We've done it all. We've proven that we are the best of all time. Let's just leave it here. Let Kyle Trask get in the game. At that point, while yes, you would be worried about him not having rushing upside, you would be looking at him having one of the best teams around him in the entire NFL. You'd be looking at Bruce Arians as his head coach. Obviously, that is something you can get excited about. You'd be looking at the fact that he's throwing the ball to Mike Evans as well as Chris Godwin, and we know that they have three or four exciting backup wide receivers on that roster as well. And this is a team that has invested into the offensive line, and this is a far above average unit. So, I mean, Kyle Trask would be coming into a situation where, I mean, he would be set up to thrive. So based on him rising to just the beginning of the third round and really not much higher than that, honestly, I don't even hate this rise given the fact that I bet if Kyle Trask did get the start in Tampa, even if he did not have that rushing upside, he would look good in real life. And that would most likely inflate his dynasty value a little too far compared to where it should be. So maybe Kyle Trask, that's just an investment that you're making into going, hey, if he ever gets that gets that starting job over the next, just say 24 months, then we just look to try to flip. We try to package him together with a second round pick and go get a first. And I think maybe that's not the worst strategy. Maybe we need to be looking to do something similar. Now, our next player is going to be Kadarius Tony, And here with Kadarius Tony, this is another situation where, I mean, I don't really understand the rise. I Maybe it's just a small sample thing, but you're looking at Kadarius Tony, And I'm on record saying that NFL draft capital definitely matters. NFL draft capital, if you look at how predictive it is, it is a great, great tool to try to use these NFL talent evaluators to our advantage because we know that they get it wrong a lot, but they also get it right a lot at the same time. But what we talk about all the time is that the wide receiver position, there are different positions within the position itself. I mean, you have those speedy guys that aren't going to profile to see a lot of volume. You're going to have the guys that are profiled to play the alpha X wide receiver role. You're going to have the guys playing the slot role. And we know that those speedy players that provide the versatility on offense, as well as having that elite 40 yard dash so they can stretch the field. Those players are always going to have a, just an overweighted draft capital because we know that they bring so much more to their NFL offense than they actually bring to our fantasy teams. So here in the case of Kadarius Tony, I think it's a lot of players looking at him going, hey, I'm getting a first round drafted wide receiver and we are getting him in the middle of the second round of rookie drafts. And I promise you, in a lot of real flock Patreon Dynasty Leagues, I was drafting Kadarius Tony in a decent amount of spots at the end of the second round. Because once you got to the end of the second round and we were looking at players, we were going, okay, Chuba Hubbard or Kadarius Tony. We're looking at Nico Collins or Kadarius Tony. Well, yeah, there. I, I mean, you want to go, Tony. You just want to take that pick. You want to make sure that you're getting a player that is going to be seeing action on the field. You want to make sure you're getting a player that is seeing snaps right away. But, I mean, Kadarius Tony is getting pushed up into a range where I've seen him go ahead of someone like Terrace Marshall. And I am not saying Terrace Marshall is going to be a significantly better NFL wide receiver. What I'm saying is Kadarius Tony can be a better wide receiver for his NFL offense, while Terrace Marshall can crush in fantasy, and while Terrace Marshall can be a much better wide receiver in dynasty. And this is something that I think finally people are starting to learn. Finally, people are starting to realize because we've had so many arguments before of people just screaming at us going, Mason, the NFL gets it wrong all the time. Mason, the NFL doesn't know what they're doing. Look at John Ross, look at Henry Ruggs. And I'm sitting here going, you have to understand the context behind it. That's what we honestly try to focus in on with that rookie draft guide and how we are representing these players. But of course, y'all are going to find that in a week. Okay, so now our next guy is going to be Nico Collins. And here with Nico Collins, 
I mean, I love this rise. Now, y'all know that this is a player that I came out and after the NFL draft, we made a video saying, hey, draft Nico Collins over and over and over again. And every day that goes by that Deshaun Watson is not suspended by the NFL. I mean, I think that makes a better chance that Deshaun Watson is playing for the Houston Texans in week one. And yes, the Houston Texans are probably the worst organization in football. I'm embarrassed to say that over a decade ago, I was a fan of the Houston Texans, but nonetheless, I mean, you're looking at Deshaun Watson as a quarterback that is so good that his efficiency marks are going to be able to provide value for whoever the wide receiver one is in Houston. And yes, I understand guys, Brandon Cooks is still there. Trust me. I loved Brandon Cooks so long in the NFL. I mean, coming out of that 2014 draft class, Brandon Cooks with a historic age adjusted production mark. I was like all in on Brandon Cooks. But the problem is, I mean, you're looking at a very old wide receiver that really is not going to be a cornerstone asset for this Houston Texans team going forward to go along with the fact that he is someone that has really never managed to stay healthy over the past three years. I know it's not his fault. I understand that concussions are one of the scariest things that you can see at any position, to be honest. But I mean, Nico Collins has a path here to be the wide receiver one on an offense that really has no target competition with one of the best quarterbacks in the entire NFL. And if you look at the talent profile for Nico Collins as well, I mean, I actually like it. I think that you're looking at a player that doesn't jump off the page with production or doesn't jump off the page with his athletic profile, but he's more than enough in pretty much every facet of the game to be someone that can succeed in the NFL if he's placed into the right situation. And I think being on a very bad team that's going to be throwing the ball very often with one of the best quarterbacks in the entire NFL, while he doesn't have to compete for targets with really anyone else, is going to provide Nico Collins fantasy value right away. And I think that's a player that could see a bump up in value this offseason. Okay, so now let's go over to Dwayne Eskridge. Honestly, one of the furthest risers from the two ADP sets. And with Eskridge, I mean... I don't want to say I hate it. I don't want to say I like it either. I mean, he is just such a hard player to evaluate and that you're looking at him as someone who stayed all five years in college. And if you stay all five years in college, I am sorry to break this news to you, but I mean, your historical hit rate of ever really doing anything significant in the NFL is close to nothing when you're playing at the wide receiver position. I mean, when you're playing at the wide receiver position, it pretty much just is something that screams stay away stay away stay away especially when you weren't productive early and that's the problem with Eskridge is if you're looking throughout his entire career I mean yes you can point to seasons here or there but I mean he did play defensive back halfway through it and that's what kind of screws up this entire prospect evaluation and why it's so hard to just look at the numbers with Dwayne Eskridge now I know that you see the Seattle Seahawks taking him in the second round and this is a little surprising given the fact that I know they lose David Moore, but he doesn't look like David Moore at all. He looks more so like Tyler Lockett, someone that is speedy, someone that can be a boomer bust player. So I don't see the hole that he's exactly filling in this Seattle Seahawks organization. Now, of course, you see the team investment. You see the fact that he is going to a team that also has one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL in Russell Wilson, and that can get exciting. But I mean, throw on the fact that it's going to be a low volume passing attack. I think with Dwayne Eskridge, he's going to be a player that's much better in best ball. Now, y'all know we run actually a decent amount of flock Patreon best ball leagues in there. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind taking Dwayne Eskridge. I think he's a player that can randomly pop off for 30 point weeks here or there. But someone that you're actually going to have to plug into your starting lineup and submit it. I mean, that's going to be very, very scary in my opinion. All right, so now another very large riser, and this is my least favorite draft pick, to be honest, is going to be Davis Mills in the third round. And here with Davis Mills, I mean, you're looking at a quarterback that really has no upside at all. Now, what we were saying earlier with Kyle Trask, we were going, hey, when you're identifying these backup quarterbacks, these guys drafted in round two, round three, that are most likely never going to get a shot to start in the NFL, what you were trying to look for is you're trying to look for a quarterback that is having one or two things, preferably both, you want that player to have elite rushing upside and that if he does get to start in the NFL, you can start him in your lineup or you want him to be like a Kyle Trask where if he gets to start in the NFL, he's going to be going to a team with an elite offensive line. You want him to have great wide receivers around him. You want him to have a very good head coach. Well, Davis Mills doesn't check either one of those boxes. In fact, you could say he is horrendous with both of those and that he has no rushing upside in the slightest based on what we saw in college and to go along with this. 
like I said, I mean, the Houston Texans are easily the worst run franchise in the NFL at this point. I mean, can you imagine how bad this team would be with Davis Mills under center? So, I mean, yeah, you're in your mind. I mean, you're thinking, hey, I'm drafting a quarterback in the third round and he has a chance to start in the NFL. That's a great investment. While in reality, even if Davis Mills starts for the Houston Texans his entire rookie season, are you ever going to be plugging him in your starting lineup? Is that ever going to be a decision you make? Most likely, it's not going to be, given the fact that Davis Mills, I mean, I, I don't even know what we're talking about here. He has no upside. This is a wasted pick. I am not excited about this at all. He's moved all the way up into the early third round of ADP, and there I'm just completely avoiding. So our last player, Josh Palmer. Here with Josh Palmer. I mean, clearly one of the biggest winners from the NFL draft, a wide receiver that I had not even heard his name before the NFL draft, before the San Diego, I'm sorry, the Los Angeles Chargers decided to draft him in the third round. Now, I mean, you're looking at him going, hey, this is not a bad wide receiver profile. I mean, it's not great, but it's not it's not horrendous. He gets the third round NFL draft capital. He does have some things you can look at to get excited. But more importantly, you're looking at with Josh Palmer, the fact that this situation is so good where he's paired up with Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert, one of the most exciting young quarterbacks in the NFL. And Mike Williams has his last year under contract in 2021. Mike Williams most likely gone from the roster next year. Josh Palmer stepping up into that wide receiver two role alongside Keenan Allen. So he's feasibly someone that does have that path to opportunity. So yeah, Josh Palmer, a very far riser. And I think that it's for great reason as well. Now, thank you guys. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really hope y'all got something from it. Of course, go down there, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We just passed 5,000 subs and yeah, I will see y'all with the video tomorrow. I really owe a massive thank you for all the Patreon supporters in Ben, Braden, Zach, Ryan, William, Derek, Justin, Marshall, Tyler, and Eamon. Thank you so much, guys.